At Game Masters in Quincy, we're passionate about the outdoors. Game Masters has the largest selection of gun safes in the tri-state area. That's right, everything from the vaults, vault doors, and safe accessories. Only the quality brands like Fort Knox, American Security, Browning, and Liberty. Come in and check out the displays or go to GameMastersOutdoors.com to check out the selection online as well. Clothing, fishing, hunting, gifts, and more. We're passionate about the outdoors.
And good evening to you. Welcome to high school basketball action on Central Illinois Sports. Live tonight from Voschel Gymnasium in Pittsfield. As the 10 and 13 Pittsfield Sockies play host to the 20 and 7 Briggsville Perry Tornadoes. Good evening to you. Alongside John Hull and Jacob Hull, I'm Charlie Hull, and this is the Great Rivers Bank pregame show on Central Illinois Sports. It's the Sockies and the Tornadoes tonight, a game that was supposed to have taken place all the way back in December. But due to injuries and illnesses in the Saki program at the time, they were unable to field the team during that week stretch or so. And so the game got pushed back to this later date. The Sockies have won four in a row. Grigsville Perry coming off of a big win last night at home against South County to claim their 20th game of the season. We'll talk more about the matchup on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show after this. Wish you had extra cash for a vacation, a boat, a new car, projects around the house, Free up more cash for the things you want by taking advantage of low interest rates. Refinance your home with Great Rivers Bank and keep more of your money by lowering your monthly payment. Start the process online at greatriversbank.bank and work with one of our experienced loan officers to get the lowest rate possible. Great Rivers Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Did you know that Prairie Land FS doesn't just sell seed? They treat it and box it right here at one of their local facilities, then deliver it to your farm or fields. Growers trust Prairie Land FS to deliver top performing crop protection products that promise the best performance before, during, and after the growing season. Prairie Land FS, your leading supplier of choice. rough day at work we all have them from time to time but the last thing you want to worry about is coming home to your internet being out or even worse waiting all day to watch the big game only to find out it's blacked out with cascom those worries are a thing of the past our local technicians are here to service any issues and ensure you have a worry-free experience whether it be internet tv or even home phone call cascom today at 1-800-252-1799 to schedule or upgrade your internet and tv service there's a road that makes all the difference. The difference between the good and the great. The road less traveled for the few who can handle the grind. One of hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership with a respect for heritage and tradition and a willingness to adapt. At Little Jess, we travel that road every day because we believe in that difference. And we dare our competition to try and keep up. Little Jess, serving the tri-state area since 1969. with you on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show on Central Illinois Sports with locations in Pittsfield, Barry, Liberty, and Hannibal. Great Rivers Bank is here to serve all of your banking needs close to where you live. Learn more at greatriversbank.bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. The 20-7 and seven Griggsville Perry Tornadoes getting a big win last night when it comes to their postseason seedings as uh, they in South County in the same regional sectional a sub complex there, so a big win for the Tornadoes last night, and also big for GP. Is John, anytime you get a chance to win 20 games in a season, you take it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this GP team has really played well uh, at times this season, really taking the ball away from a lot of people, scored a lot of points uh, up and down the court, and uh, they're fun and exciting to watch. Well, and this is a team that has, by the way, no seniors on it, so if you like what you see from Grigsville Perry, you're going to like it for about another year and a half because uh, this is a group of uh, kids who are going to all be back, and they're hoping to make a little bit of noise in this postseason and then build on that even more so next year. Yeah, no, no seniors, but also no freshmen, so uh, kind of a kind of an odd grouping of classes there for sure, but uh, GP uh, has been an exciting team for a couple of years, and they're definitely kind of coming together. Well, and I think the story of the demise of Grigsville Perry was greatly exaggerated when you took a look at back-to-back -back losses against West Hancock and Camp Point Central. I think people underestimate how good those two teams are. And while uh, Grigsville Perry didn't have their best showing in that, and Coach Garrett White will be the first one to tell you that, John, this is a team that's still going to make some noise in the postseason, very well could win a regional. Camp Point Central beat uh, a good Atlanta West team last night by 34 points. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that's a pretty good basketball team too. And uh, it, it may have been more uh, about Camp Point Central playing really well than it was. I mean, it was both. 
Gregsville Perry did not play very well in that game, but uh, a lot of Camp Point Central playing really well in that game. Pittsfield has won four in a row after having a dismal month of January. They've started off February with a bang, and this will be one of their tougher tests during that stretch. They'll really have to take good care of the basketball if they hope to compete in this one. Yeah, and uh, you know, Pittsfield faced a lot of pressure last night, I felt like, from Beardstown. Beardstown does have a lot of athletes that they throw at you and uh, really try to pressure the ball. And uh, so maybe that was kind of a good uh, first chance at, uh, at pressure to see how you handle it. Boschel Gymnasium is rocking and hopping tonight. Good crowds on both sides of the gym. Glad you're with us here on Central Illinois Sports on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. Back with more of the matchup between the Tornadoes and the Sockies after this. Hey guys, it's James and Todd coming at you from Jersey's here. Hey, and it is a B E A beautiful day outside. Catch all the action at Jersey's in Cam Point. Fresh, made to order sandwiches, wraps, horseshoes. Check out our brisket bacon burger, our Nashville hot chicken. Fried chicken every Thursday night. Enjoy an afternoon on the patio or catch a game on one of our seven TVs. Queen of Hearts drawing every Wednesday at seven o'clock. Todd? Get some beers for us. Hey, you know what? It's time for that segment. We love beer! Ice cold draft beer, unmatched craft selection, and signature drinks. Jersey's Bar and Grill in Camp Point, your hometown sports bar. From our trucks, to their lunch trays, to your local hospital, to your favorite pub, and to your kitchen table. For more than 60 years, Dot Foods and Dot Transportation have been stocking the shelves of your hometown. Sure, we've grown a lot, but at our core, we're still small-town, family-run businesses that care about our communities and the people who keep us running. Join the Dot family today and be part of something bigger. Better with pets. Well, Jim, it's going well, but something tells me they're going to have to bring more to the field if they want this game watch party on February 12th to be a winner. That's right, Steve. They need to dig deep from the Liquor Booth playbook to stock up on all the fan favorites for the big game. Bourbon, whiskey, vodka, and tequila must be on the host mind. Good thing the Liquor Booth has a variety of beer on the bench to pull from. They might even call in the wine reserves to make this happen. They're huddled up at the Liquor Booth on Broadway and at 12th and Locust, ready to send in the game changers. Back with you on the Great Rivers Bank pregame show. Want to give a special shout out tonight to one of our viewers, and that's Malin. Watching along as the Tornadoes and the Sockies are getting ready to play. And Damon is going to be buying Malin her first Saki shirt, I hear, before too long. So we appreciate Damon Emmerich for that. And speaking of Damon Emmerich, he and the great loan officers at Great Rivers Bank can help you with your next auto home, residential, or commercial loan need. Stop by and see them at any of their locations in Barry, Liberty, Hannibal, and Pittsfield. Or log on to GreatRiversBank.Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender, the Tornadoes and the Sockies. Jobless group of kids for Grigsville Perry, the juniors, which is kind of the, the key nucleus to this group that we've seen uh, really grow. Of course, won a uh, state championship in junior high. This is a group of kids that have never lost to their counterparts on the other side uh, on the Sockies. Now, Pittsfield won the varsity game last year, but it, it's kind of hard to say, you know, with some of the pieces that graduated and such that you could call this uh, the key part, but this group's pretty used to winning against these guys. Yeah, that's very true, and uh, they've they've been playing uh, with uh, Coach Garrett White and uh, the same uh, offenses, defenses, um, pretty much that whole time, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, how that comes out. One of the biggest things we've seen out of Pittsfield over this four-game winning streak is they've been shooting the basketball well, and that's because they've been getting to good scoring spots and shooting higher percentage shots rather than settling for those shots on the perimeter. Yeah, they've been uh, starting from inside, and then, you know, when that defense is wanting to crash in on those guys, finding the open man on the outside for uh, basically open three-pointers. Uh, yeah, Saki shot, uh, I believe, 65-ish uh, percent from the floor last night. But uh, I know in the first quarter, they had not attempted a three-pointer, and uh, early in the season, that would have uh, basically been unheard of for this Saki team. 
John, I didn't know if you heard today, but uh, an Andean bear at the St. Louis Zoo escaped its habitat, and they had to tranquilize it to get it back inside where it was. I heard that bear was coming actually for the live bear wrestling match at halftime here because there's uh, quite a bit of things going on tonight. Mini cheer camp, a basketball game, and uh, DJ Clint Weir uh, rocking the tunes here at Bochel Gym, a fun atmosphere for a high school basketball game. He would have had to find a ride here, Charlie. I don't think he would have made it in the uh, just the walk. Oh, he had uh, probably been barefoot when he got here, but uh, uh, wow. we'll just let that one roll on. Speaking of rolling on, we roll on to the Great Rivers Bank pregame show five minutes away from the Star Spangled Banner, the starting lineups and the play-by-play -play on Central Illinois Sports. When you're ready to make your dream kitchen and bathroom a reality, find inspiration at Pike County Lumber in Pittsfield. It starts with a 3D design so you can see every angle and every custom detail. Traditional style or the newest trends will create a design to fit your lifestyle. Your custom kitchen and bathroom will have the features that you need. A large versatile island for work or entertaining. Quartz countertops. Quality onyx that offers dozens of colors. From start to finish, trust the knowledge and experience at Pike County Lumber. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You've heard that phrase many times in Rod Prentice in Pittsfield. Your State Farm agent is the guy you can count on to be your friend and neighbor in the insurance business. He has a complete line of insurance available for you from State Farm Insurance. You can reach him at 217-285-6930. Our family trusts Rod Prentice with all of our insurance needs. Stop by their office on Washington Street and see the girls in Rod Prentice, your State Farm agent, 217-285-6930. Are you short on time or budget, but your family is hungry? It's time for the Maya Authentic Mexican Restaurant in Pittsfield. Try the Maya Special, a crowd favorite. Delicious grilled fajitas, steaks, nachos Mexicano, salads in the tortilla bowl, the tastiest salsa and cheese sauce around, and the fastest service anywhere. You can afford it. It's the Maya Mexican Restaurant on Washington Street. Call ahead with your order and you can pick it up in the drive through 217-285-4526. The Maya Restaurant restaurant in Pittsfield. Farmers, are you looking for high-yield genetics to help the bottom line on your farm? Contact Lipkeman Seed Sales for high-yielding A-Series soybeans from Pioneer. We have the luxury right now to be offering the highest-yielding soybean lineup Pioneer has offered in 30 years. Couple that with the service that is second to none, and you have a winning combination for your farm. For corn, check out the results of the National Corn Growers Yield Contact and see who's at the top. Maybe today is a good day to revisit Pioneer corn hybrids as well. Contact Aaron, Evan, and Brett today for high-yielding A-Series soybeans from Pioneer. Go Eagles! Rewards checking, I'm not sure if there's a better checking account around. They have three requirements each month, and if they meet those requirements, we will pay them the highest checking account interest rate that we have right now. At this time, it is a very generous 4.07 APY. As far as ID Secure goes, it gives you protection with credit monitoring, cell phone protection. Prevent identity theft at a reasonable cost. It's watching out for you. And every 90 days you get an update on it. So the peace of mind of that's very nice. Luke and Aaron Fessler at Fessler Insurance are here to help you with all of your insurance needs. Fessler Insurance, a country financial agency, provides life, health, auto, home, and farm insurance. Trust your insurance needs to the local folks at Fessler Insurance. Call for a quote today at 217-285-4429 or stop by at 1165 West Washington Street in Pittsfield for Fessler Insurance. Back with you on the Grant Rivers Bank pregame show, the Tornadoes and the Sockies tonight on Central Illinois Sports. Pittsfield will be in action again on Friday as they'll be at Barry to take on the Western Wildcats. We'll also have action for you from Camp Point Central on Friday as the Central Panthers play host to the Macomb High Bombers on senior night for a uh, good Panther squad, man, is really on a roll right now. Tonight, though, it's a battle of the uh, two Pike County rivals, the Pittsfield Sockies and the Grigsville Perry Tornadoes. It's the United States Army Band and Choir with their national anthem. When we come back, we'll have the Farm and Home Supply starting lineups on Central Illinois Sports. <laughs>
you think of fall, what comes to mind besides pumpkins, honey, and football? How about fertilizer? Studies show more than one-third of your crop's yield is determined by fertilizer alone. Studies also show as much as 40% potassium and 30% phosphate gets tied up in stocks and residue, as well as high clay content. Nutrient Ag Solutions recommends Titan, which is an innovative fertilizer catalyst designed for use with dry fertilizer blends. Titan will keep nutrients from being tied up and increase fertilizer availability in your crop. Titan is a low-cost option to improve crop fertility. Contact your Nutrien Crop Consultant today. Hey, West Central Illinois, are you looking for a great deal on a vehicle? Well, at West Town Ford, we have a lot full of vehicles. Cars, trucks, vans, SUVs. We've got them all, and a lot of them, at West Town Ford in Jacksonville. Well, nice job by the Saki Anthem Singers with the National Anthem tonight. Time to take a look at the starting lineups. They're brought to you by Trucks LLC, operating out of their building in the industrial park of Pittsfield, and they have mobile service units to serve all of your diesel repair needs. Trucks 217-922-0044. Well, let's meet the visiting team, the Griggsville Perry Tornadoes. They're 20 and 7 on the season. Here on the Farm and Home Supply starting lineups on Central Illinois Sports. Of course, Farm and Home Supply, you'll find them in your local communities. From snacks and hoodies to power tools and lawn chairs, no other place has it all like your local Farm and Home Supply. Wyatt Lipkeman starts at a guard, the 5'9 junior. Lane Lipkeman, his twin brother, starts at a second guard, a 5'8 junior. Flint Kirk in the starting lineup, a 6'0 sophomore and a forward. Garrett Woodward is a 6'0 guard. He is a sophomore. And Michael Myers, the 6'2 junior at the guard for the Tornadoes. For the Pittsfield Sockies, Brad Tomave's squad starts at a guard. A senior, Adam Musgrave, 6'1", having a nice season. Nolan Daniel, a 5'9"-inch senior. Brennan Tomhave, a 6'0 junior. Javen Petty, the 6'0 junior. And the big man, Eli Minden, all starts in the middle for the Sockies, the 6'2"-inch junior. We'll tip it off for Boschel, Pittsfield, Creeksville Perry next on Central Illinois Sports. Uh-huh, yeah, I'm at Farm and Home for Essentials. Find everything you need? No, apparently not. Thank you. No other place has it all, like Farm and Home Supply. This is Charlie Hull, and I'm asking for your vote for the Pikeland School Board. As a lifelong resident of Pike County, I know of the many great things the Pikeland School District has been able to accomplish and the great success of so many of our students. I want to help make our district a place where kids are excited to learn, teachers are excited to teach, and a place our great community members feel welcomed and proud to be a part of. I would appreciate your vote for Pikeland School Board on April 4th. If your job situation is changing because of layoffs or restructuring, you may have to make several decisions. One important decision may be what to do with your retirement plan. Make sure your retirement stays on track. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor, can help. Stop by the office at 1891 Main Street in Quincy, Illinois. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Fans are excited to be here tonight at Boschel Gymnasium, and we're excited you've joined us here on Central Illinois Sports. The Tornado is in the visiting maroon uniforms with the white numbers and gold trim. The Sockies in the whites tonight with the red numbers and black trim. Ready to tip it off at Boschel Gymnasium in Pittsfield, Illinois on Central Illinois Sports. Musgrave will jump in the center circle here against Jake, you're going to have to loosen it there, pal, against Myers, and the tip is up and controlled by the Tornadoes. Tornadoes get the basketball to start tonight, and we're underway here at Boschel. On the right side, Lane Lipkin reverses the ball over to Woodward. Woodward has found himself in the starting lineup over the last couple of weeks. Just a sophomore is Garrett Woodward, has played well. Ball out front now goes to Lane Lipkeman. Dribble drive in tonight there and the man-to-man -man by Daniel. On the right side, Wyatt Lipkeman puts it on the deck against Tom Abe. Out top, deep three, Myers no good. And Daniel grabs the board for the Sockets. He'll get it to Tom Abe into the front court against the zone defense of Griggsville Perry. Tom Abe with it between the circles. Right side, Daniel off the screen for Mendenhall. Hit the ball to the high post, right side, Daniel. Out top, Tom Abe has shot it well over the last four 
for Pittsfield. Here's Mendenhall free throw line to Daniel behind the arc. Back to Mendenhall. He'll attack down low, finds Musgrave, gets caught underneath. Ball back out on the perimeter. Petty, left side three, no good. And the rebound run down by Nolan Daniel, his second rebound of the contest. Petty with the basketball now up top to Tom Hay between the circles. 6.47 to play in the first period. No score here on the Trucks LLC scoreboard. Daniel has picked it up, got to get out of the lane. Does so now to Tom Hay. Gets it to Mendenhall. Dishes left side, Petty. Three ball again, this time off the mark. And the rebound secured by Lane Lipkeman. His first. Into the front court come the Tornadoes. So shots outside the perimeter. And now a reach-in foul on the sideline called against Javen Petty. It'll be Javen Petty's first, team first, and it'll be ball out of bounds for Gregsville Perry on the sideline in front of the Sockets. Let's get things adjusted a little bit. No wonder I couldn't hear myself think there for a moment. 6.23 to play in the first. At about 3 o'clock, here's Lipkeman against Petty. Oh. Gets it out top now. That's to Myers. To Woodward on the right side. Nearly two minutes into the contest, no score. Kirk on the baseline. Works it out between the circles to Wyatt Lipkeman, averaging better than 15 a game this season. Dribbles in, goes out top. Myers sets up three ball off the iron, no good. Rebound loose and goes off of Mindenhall out of bounds. It'll be Grigsville Perry basketball once again here. Mindenhall and Kirk went after it. Kirk uh, was on the floor. Mindenhall's foot knocked it out. What do they say? First guy to the floor wins, usually. 5.59 to play in the first. No score on the trunk scoreboard. Lane Lipkeman to inbound. Way out front, Woodward hands it off to Wyatt Lipkeman. He looks to the bench for the play call here for Coach Garrett White. A 20-game winner is Gregsville Perry so far this season. And now here's a foul going to be called on Eli Mindenhall and two shots coming up for Wyatt Lipkeman. Mindenhall's first team second. Wyatt Lipkeman to the free throw line, shooting a couple. 5.49 to go, no score in the game. Wyatt Lipkeman looking to uh, break that. And his first is up, and it rattles around and gets home. Wada Express here to serve you with walk in medical care when you need it. Open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every Monday through Saturday. You'll find a lot of Express on the south side of the square in Pittsfield. Lipkeman misses the second rebound, comes down to Mendenhall, his first. one nothing Grigsville Perry here in the top of the first on Central Illinois Sports. 5.40 to play in the period. Ball comes to Musgrave, works a pass, it's tipped. Musgrave runs it back down, and then is fouled from behind by Wyatt Lipkin. And just one of those hustle plays that resulted in a foul being called. Wyatt Lipkin's first foul team first against Grigsville Perry Ball to bounds underneath the basket to Pittsfield. Five minutes, 36 seconds to play in the opening period, as John told you. In the corner, the ball comes to Tom Hay. Works it out to Daniel. Pittsfield has uh, been pretty much shooting on the perimeter. You'd like to see them work it inside. Uh, if you're a Saki fan, they've had some success on that. Easier said than done against this active zone. Here's Mendenhall from the free throw line. He'll find the mark and put Pittsfield on the board, making it a 2-1 contest. It is a loud gymnasium here tonight at Beauchamp. Wyatt Lipkeman on the run into the front court. Drives at Mendenhall. Ball poked away, stolen away by Mendenhall here. First turnover on GP. Now stealing it right back is Lane Lipkeman with a larceny and the layup up and good. 3 2 Tornadoes as Lipkeman picked the pocket of Petty. 4.50 to play in the first. Second lead change of the game as Grigsville Perry up 3 2. Mindenall with it near the sideline out top to Tom Hafe. He'll look to Petty now on the wing. Both teams have. Uh, Stayed at the same five that started the contest so far. Here's a pass down low. Inside, Musgrave puts it up and in for his first two. And makes the score four to three. How about an adjustment the opposite way now that we figured that out a bit? Thank you. Into the front court with it comes Lane Lipkeman to Kirk. Woodward gets a touch now way out top. He can really shoot it, can Garrett Woodward. They've kind of asked him to be a little more of a ball handler, trying to open some things up a little more for Wyatt Lipkeman early on the offensive side. Here's Lane Lipkeman, right side, it goes to Woodward. Back out, Lane Lipkeman on the wing, Myers. The help side man was late, and Myers is up and in for two. Michael Myers with his first basket of the contest, and the Tornadoes retake the lead, 5-4 the score. Fourth lead, James. 3.45 to play in the first. Here's a bad pass by Petty. Stolen away by Myers. Myers attacks down low. 
Dishes out Woodward, left side three, good from downtown Garrett Woodward. We told you he can shoot the rock and puts the Tornadoes on top by four. Mend it all into the front court for the Sockies. To Tom Hay. On the right side, Daniel gets a touch. Inside of the big man, Mendenhall. He'll put it up and in. That's where Pittsfield feels they have the best advantage in this contest, and it has been where they've scored their points so far. Lipkeman out to Woodward. Now Wyatt Lipkeman on the bounce. Over to Myers. Myers out there trying a couple of threes. Has done a nice job to get to the rim, too. He's really long. He'll now step back for a deep three, no good. Rebound down to Musgrave for the Sockets. His first. Under three minutes to play in the period, an eight hits advantage for Griggsville Perry on the Trex LLC scoreboard. Petty on the right side finds Daniel. Looks out top now, Tom Abe. He's not been able to get free for a shot yet tonight. Daniel to Tom Abe. Fakes the three. Right side, Daniel. He'll launch it from downtown, and it's good. Splash. It goes through the net for Nolan Daniel, and Pittsfield retakes the advantage on the fifth lead change of this affair. Back and forth here so far tonight at Bosch. 2.22 to play in the first period on Central Illinois Sports. Glad you're with us here. It's a back gymnasium here with uh, red and black on one side, a maroon and a gold on the other. Here's Wyatt Lipkman trying to drive in against Mendenhall. Denied there. Now Lane Lipkman knifes the lane. Shot up no good. Rebound Flint Kirk. His put back is up and in. Flint Kirk with a good workmanship effort there. Makes it a 10-9 contest as the Tornadoes retake the lead. Just a hair under two minutes to play in the opening period. Mended all on the wing left side. Musgrave, free throw line jump shot too hard. Rebound though comes down to Musgrave. He'll attack the rack. Floater up is good. But the official says the foul occurred before the shot. And that shot will not count. Foul on the Tornadoes is Lane Lipkeman, his first team second. Here comes Connor Allen and Caden Anstead into the game. Javen Petty and Eli Minden all both sit down with a foul apiece for the Sockies. 144 to play in the period. 10-9, Griggsville Perry on top on the Trucks scoreboard. Pittsfield ball underneath their own hoop. Inbounds pass, Tom Abe looking to get it in. Does so to Daniel, way out front. Musgrave on the wing now. Daniel over to Tom Abe. We're trying to get Tom Abe out on one of those wings so he can get a chance maybe to fire a three up here. Here's Anstead at the free throw line. Dribbles it back out, hands it to Daniel. Right side, Tom Abe. Of course, Daniel nailed the three a moment ago from the right wing. 120 to play in the first. Tornadoes have a one-point lead. Pittsfield has the basketball. Daniel to Musgrave left wing. Surveys the floor. Long skip pass over to Tom Habe. Three too long. And the rebound is loose. A scrum for it. Allen on the ground, and he saves it alive for the Sockies. To Tom Habe out top for three. Good. Second time's the charm for Tom Habe. And makes it a 12-10 Pittsfield lead. Their largest of the night is two-point advantage with under a minute to play in the first. Wow, what a dandy game so far. Mike Lipkeman holds the ball next to his hip. Says, let's take a moment to relax, shall we? These Lipkeman boys, man, I'll tell you what. They list one at 5'9 and one at 5'8, and there ain't anybody that plays bigger than these two guys anytime they're on the court. Myers out top to Woodward. I mean, pound for pound toughness, it's 1-1A one and one a between those two guys in the area. 25 ticks to play in the first. Woodward gets it to Myers. Dane McAllister has checked in for the Tornadoes as well. He's at the high post. 15 seconds to play in the period. Wyatt Lipkin with the ball in his hands. Looks back to Garrett White, says, what are we doing? Oh, a little one four high, all right. Left side, Myers left wide open for a three. Planks off the rim, no good. Rebound down, they'll get it back to Myers. He can't connect. This time the Sockies get the board. And after a one, it is the Pittsfield Sockies 12, the Griggsville Perry Tornadoes 10, as you watch high school basketball on Central Illinois Sports. BCRE Real Estate and Auction is your number one resource for buying or selling real estate in West Central Illinois. With two office locations, one in Pike County and the other in Calhoun County, BCRE Real Estate and Auction is the place to go when you're looking to buy or sell farmland, recreational and hunting land, residential or commercial property. See our current listings at PCRERealEstate.com or call us at 217-285-5800 for PCRE Real Estate and Auction. 
The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville with locations in Griggsville, Mount Sterling, and Pittsfield. Maybe you ask, why choose Farmers National Bank of Griggsville? The answer is simple. Local people, local decisions, and local commitment with local investments. We have many products and services to meet your needs. We invite you to find out more about us. Go to fnbgriggsville.com and explore all the services we offer. Visit any of our three friendly locations in Mount Sterling, Griggsville, and Pittsfield today. The Farmers National Bank of Griggsville, local people helping local people, member FDIC. After a period, it's Pittsfield 12, Griggsville Perry 10, and what's been a dandy game so far, and John's got to look at those shooting percentages. Saki shooting 6 of 10 from the floor, uh, 60%, 2 of 5 from 3. GP, 4 of 10, 40%, 1 of 6 from 3. Pittsfield starts the second quarter with the basketball in their possession. After Michael Myers had a couple of threes, Clang just short off the rim to end the first. This is Pittsfield's biggest lead of the game. Here's Connor Allen on a drive in. He'll bowl his way in for his first basket and makes it a 14-10 Saki lead. Here's Myers breaking free. Drives in. He'll hang in the air with the answer at the other end for two. Michael Myers with another basket. He's got four. 7.30 to play in the first half. Mended all into the front court. Dribbles away from the double team. Drives down low. Now it's caught into a little bit of a pickle. Throws out of it to Tommy. Petty, Musgrave, Mendenhall, Tom Ave, and Allen for Pittsfield. It's Wyatt and Lane Lipkeman, Myers, McAllister, and Eli White for the Tornadoes to start the second period. Aside Musgrave around the horn against the zone of GP. They fairly exclusively play this matchup zone. Out top, Tom Ave looked for a pass down low. Ball deflection by McAllister. Dead ball allows Nolan Daniel to check in. Adam Musgrave takes a chair for Pittsfield. 6.52 to play in the half. Tom Abe to throw it in underneath the basket. Gets it in to Eli Mendenhall, who wins the battles of the Elis this time as Eli White caught a little flat-footed. Heads up play by Mendenhall and... Tom Habe that time to get the easy two for the Sockies. White's first team third. Pittsfield with the 16-12 four-point lead. 6.51 to go in the first half of play. Mendenhall looking to extend the biggest lead for Pittsfield. If he could make it, it would be that five. And he does. He Mendenhall says well, with seven. Not airballing any more of those. 17-12 Pittsfield. 6.47 to play in the half. Pretty good heads-up basketball by Tom Avon Mendenhall that time, as you saw in the Northwestern Mutual replay. Just uh, recognized that there was a lack of communication on the GP defensive side of things and took advantage of it. Wyatt lipped him in a right wing. He'll dish it out top, Myers. Myers knives the lane. They grab him on the way to the basket, and a foul will be whistled here on the Sockies. I think it's Petty, and it is. That'll be Petty's second and the uh, team third against Pittsville. It'll be ball out of bounds underneath the basket to Griggsville. Perry Petty sits down as Musgrave comes back in. Hey, they're watching it at the Bowlers Universe tonight. Hope you folks are winning the Queen of Hearts, and hopefully I win. 6.26 to play in the half. Wyatt Lip coming with it out between the circles. Charlie disappears. We'll know he uh, got drawn. He's got to pick his card. Yeah, Jacob will have the play-by-play, -play, and out here we'll have a foul. I think it's going to go against Mendenhall. If that is, that's bad news. Nope, it's going to be against Allen instead. That'll be Connor Allen's first foul, team fourth. It'll be a ball out of bounds to GP once again. 6.15 to play in the half, 17-12, advantage for Pittsfield. Tornado's on the attack, trying to cut it closer here. Around the horn it comes. Lane Lipkeman, Wyatt Lipkeman, he'll try the dribble drive, runs over a man, no call, Ooh. biggest play on there, and wow. It got physical for a moment. Let's get physical. It's got to be physical. something there, right? Free throw line with it is Mendenhall. Goes to the spin move, a little up and under. Then tried the pass at the last minute and threw it out of bounds. A turnover on the sock. Let's take a look at that play at the other end again for a moment. Turnover right. the third there. Ryan Lipkeman and uh, Thame, or that was Allen, I guess, collide, and they both get up okay, luckily. A lot of, a lot of contact, let's call it. 5.50 to play in the half. Out front, Myers with it. Gets it to McAllister at the free throw line. He loses his footing. Got rid of it just in the nick of time. Lane Lipkeman looks to the bench for the play call. Right side, McAllister. Now Myers right down the middle. Floater up good again. Michael Myers another two. He's got six. He's come to play tonight for this GP squad and brings his team back within three points. Into the front court, Eli Mendenhall. 
Puts it on the deck in the corner, Musgrave. Fakes now tries the bounce. Works it out top, Daniel, to Tom Abe on the wing. Over to Daniel, to Musgrave left side. Tell you what, Adam Musgrave has improved so much as a basketball player in the last year. He showed signs and little flashes of it last season. But man, he's really become a complete player. Now Mendenhall in some trouble. He uh, is being grabbed and held ball. And it'll be Grigsville Perry basketball on the alternating possession arrow. Good active hands by Flint Kirk. And I like the energy he brings to this tornado squad. A fourth turnover on the Sockies. Now Musgrave last year was kind of an athlete who played basketball. This year he's really become more of a basketball player. 4.54 to play in the half. Right side with it is Wyatt Lipman. A little isolation. Daniel picks his pocket clean that time on the defensive stop. Into the front court, Musgrave to Tom Have. Did not leave his feet. That's why it wasn't a travel. His toes never came off the ground, no matter what you thought your eyes saw that time. Extra pass right side, Daniel. Off the bounce. Pull up, Jay, no good. And the rebound down to Myers. Allen pass goes to Wyatt Lipman. Wants to run into the front court. Challenged at the rim. Finishes through the contact and has the and one opportunity coming up here. Count the basket. Foul on Tom Hay. That'll be his first, team fifth. Wyatt Lipkman uh, shooting one. He's one for two from the free throw line. He's got three points. 17-16 the score. He can give us our uh, first tie, and he does. A little 5-0 run by the Tornadoes. Ties the game up at 17 points apiece on the Trex LLC scoreboard. 4.20 to play in the half. Tom Mave in the backcourt for the Sockies. Works it across to Daniel. Petty on the bench with two fouls for Pittsfield, so they're a little short on the guard play at the moment. Up top, Tom Mave over to Musgrave. Looks in the paint, nothing open. Got to get the ball reversed if you're Pittsfield. Try to get that zone, see if you can't get it to flatten out a bit here. Tom Mave out between the circles, under four to play in the half, and a game knotted at 17 points apiece. Been a while since the Sockies have scored, though. Right side, Daniel with it. Down low, there's Allen. Found an opening. Turnaround shot, no good. Rebound out of bounds off of Flint Kirk. And it will remain Pittsfield basketball. Pretty good look that time from Allen. I think he actually had a chance to go up and use the backboard. Now, Anstead into the game as Mendenhall takes a chair for Pittsfield. I'm not sure he didn't have room for a couple of steps to the basket even. Tom Have to trigger. 3.42 to play in the half. Inbounds comes to Musgrave. Out top, Daniel. I hope the Sockies ran exactly what they were going to maybe had drawn up to run there. <laughs> Just guessing. Here's a, now a turnover as Musgrave lost the handle. A chance for GP to retake a lead. Lane Lipkman drives in. Runner up. Good. And he gives the Tornadoes the advantage. 19-17 and a timeout called by the Sockies. Three minutes, 21 seconds to play in the half. It's Grigsville Perry on top. 19-17. Time to be thinking about tax planning. You can count on Illinois FBFM for accounting, consulting, and tax preparation for farmers and businesses in Pike, Brown, and Adams County. Phone 217-593-7233. That's 593-7233. Illinois FBFM can take care of your farm accounting needs. Get your accounts in order for this tax season. Contact Jesse Schutman, Emily Matthews, and Brad Wellman. Illinois FBFM in Camp Point, working for you. Press Yours on You would like to wish all the area teams the best of luck this year. If you're looking to get your team shirts or just looking for spirit wear for yourself, remember Press Yours on You. We have over 1,400 square foot of retail space in our shop. Stop by and see us and check out our offerings. Business lets us help you promote your brand. Decoration methods we offer include screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving. Thank you to everyone in our community for the support over the last 16 years. Thank you for supporting local. Press Yours on You, 506 Westwood. Camp Point, Illinois. Three minutes, 21 seconds to play in the half. Pittsfield calls the first time out as they've seen Briggsville Perry go on a 7-0 run to take a 19-17 lead on the Trucks LLC scoreboard. It'll be Pittsfield all length of the court to go. Sockies have just mustered three shots here in the period. Here's Allen into the front court. They got it across, but it wasn't necessarily the easiest I've ever seen a press beam broken. Right side, Daniel. Pressured there by Lane Lipkin. Out to Tom May, right back to Daniel. Looks for an opening inside the zone. Now they'll get it in the middle to Allen. He'll fake, kick it left side. Musgrave for a three. It's an air ball. And Flint Kirk has another board. 
Tornado's on the attack, trying to add on this two-point lead. Myers to McAllister, back to Myers. Lane Lipkeman now on the drive. Gives it off to Dane McAllister, the six-foot, four-inch junior. 2.35 to play in the half. GP with their 20th win of the season last night. It was a nail-biter, though. I think 45-43 was the final. Here's a little pick-and-roll action. McAllister can't get it to go, but he's fouled as Anstead left his feet, and he'll be called for his first. Anstead's first, team six, and McAllister to the free-throw line, shooting a couple. 19-17, 2.25 to go in the half. GP with the one, uh, excuse me, the two-point lead over Pittsfield. McAllister shooting a couple. He's looking for his first points of the day. He makes his first. They'll have another. Bowlers Universe open Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Fridays until midnight. Saturdays, 4 to midnight. They offer a great menu and a great selection of craft beers. Check it out at Bowlers Universe in Pittsfield. McAllister makes them both and uh, ties GP's biggest lead at four. Four-point tornado advantage. 21-17 with 2.19 to play in the first half. Tom Ave into the front court. And a bad spot through a bad pass, and it was stolen. By McAllister. Six Lane, turnover. Lane Lipkeman to Myers. Wyatt Lipkeman right side. 21-17 the score. Lipkeman pull up shot. Banks it home. And makes it a 23-17 tornado lead. Under two minutes to play in the half. Tornado's on a big run here. They trailed 17-12. Now they lead 22-17. A 10-0 run. Call it 11 over on the scoreboard's wrong. Yeah. Scoreboard on the uh, Central Illinois Sports Feed is correct. The scoreboard of the gym is wrong right now, and now we have a foul on one of the tornadoes. Foul called against McAllister, his first team fourth. It'll be ball out of bounds underneath the basket to Pittsfield. Hanstead sits down yeah. as Mindenhall returns for the Sockies. 145 to play in the half, 23 17 GP, and 11 0 run by the tornadoes. Here's Mindenhall. To Allen, shot fake and a drive. Now he's banged around a little bit, and Wyatt Lipkeman will pick up his second. Wyatt Lipkeman, second team, fifth, and it'll be ball out of bounds underneath the basket to Pittsfield. Kirksville Perry, not uh, a very deep bench. So uh, Lipkeman will sit down, and Woodward comes back in. That's been deep enough to win 20 games it so far been. this year. Tom Abel inbound, gets it into Allen. Back to Tom Abel, left side. Couldn't get free for a three. 135 to play in the half. 23-17 is the tornado advantage on the truck scoreboard. Daniel to Musgrave. Off of the screen. Right side back to Daniel. Down on the short corner. Good pass inside. Mendenhall goes up. Out the basket. They'll say he was fouled on the play. And they'll get an and one opportunity here. Mendenhall with nine. He's uh, one for one from the free throw line. Count the basket. That makes it 23-19 now. GP with the lead. Myers and, uh, gets the, is the man called for the foul. Yeah, Michael Myers first foul, team sixth. Mendenhall shooting one. 23-19. 119 to go in the first half of play. And Mendenhall makes it easy. First man in double figures at 10. 23 20 the score, 117 to play in the half. It's they got it right finally on the board, Correct. didn't they, John? Yep, they finally caught us. Good, I don't have to look at two different things, and I'm not that smart. A minute seven to play in the half. We'll have the little Jess Motors halftime show coming up for you at halftime. More tricky like that here. Down near the half court line is McAllister on the bounce. Over to Myers. Back to McAllister, 52 seconds to play in the second period. Lane Lipkeman holds it out near the half-court line. I think GP would like to hold for one if they can with Wyatt Lipkeman sitting on the bench especially. He's not on the bench. He's back out there. I lied to you. Didn't even see him. He looks just like that other Lipkeman kid. I know. Kid. <laughs> they hide like that. They'd have been triplets. They might have had 25 wins so far. Here's Lane Lipkeman with 27 seconds to play in the half. Still on the bounce against Musgrave. A couple of kids that can really motor out there right now. And calling that timeout is Garrett White as it was close to a five-second call. We'll pause as well. 
17.1 seconds to play in the half. Tornado's up three. They'll have the ball when we come back. United Community Bank has been serving our community in banking since 1973 and is a proud member of the Pittsfield Strong United Community. UCB brings you the latest banking technology, security, and convenience you expect. Delivered with friendly local service you deserve from your community bank. UCB invites you to stop in for a visit at number one professional plaza in Pittsfield or you can find them online at ucbbank.com. United Community Bank, the leader of community banking, member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Sign up for a Saki Rewards debit card. 17.1 seconds to play of the half. GP took their first time out. They brought Wade Lipkeman in in the meantime. So they have Wade, Lane, and Wyatt Lipkeman out there along with McAllister and Myers for the Tornadoes trying to expand on this 23-20 lead just before the halftime break. Myers the man to throw it in near the scoreboard or score table, I should say. Gets it to Lane Lipkeman. He'll walk it across the center circle with 10 seconds to play in this first half. Been a dandy game here in Beauchamp. All handoff to Myers. Works off the screen from McAllister. A lot of contact, no call. They play on. Wade Lipkeman fresh off the bench. Three-point shot at the buzzer, no good. And we head to halftime in the Little Jess Motors halftime show. It's the Griggsville Perry Tornadoes 23, the Pittsfield Sockies 20, Back with halftime stats and more after this. Here at Little Jess, we value hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership. We have a respect for heritage and tradition and believe in the pursuit of building legacies, breaking records, and putting forth award-winning results. That's why supporting schools and local teams is one of our favorite and most exciting parts of our business. For over seven decades, we strive daily to use those same values as a foundation to meet our community's automotive needs and support our future generations. Little Jess Motors, serving our community since 1969. Hello everyone, welcome to the beautiful and historic city that is Pittsfield, Illinois, a community that feels like home. Home to over 4,000 residents, a progressive and growing community serves as an amazing place to live, learn, work, and play. With civic, charitable, family and recreational activities available, you'll never be bored here. Attend an event or festival, play some disc golf on our new championship course, spend the day fishing, or even catch a Civil War reenactment. As a community driven by success, Pittsfield provides numerous incentives to assist citizens and local businesses. Our goal in Pittsfield is to truly advance and prosper. Staying healthy is made easy here with access to doctors, dentists, and other medical specialists throughout the community. People come to Pittsfield for a variety of reasons. Stately historical homes, an abundance of natural resources, hunting, scenic areas along the Illinois and Mississippi rivers, festivals, recreational opportunities, and much more. People stay in Pittsfield simply because life here is great. Picture yourself in Pittsfield today. Cole Best Systems Builders for all your insulation needs. We are a full service insulation contractor offering both open and closed cell spray foam, blown cellulose, and fiberglass installation. Best Systems has two BPI certified professionals ready to inspect your home or business today. You may qualify for incentives through the American Act on Energy program. Call Scott or Michael at 217-285-6005 for your free estimate or visit us online at gobestsystems.com and start saving money on your energy bill today. Welcome back to the Little Jess Motors halftime show. A halftime lead for Griggsville Perry 23-20 over the Pittsfield Sockies. Halftime stats are brought to you in part by the Pike County Express, your local family-owned newspaper. They've been serving Pike County since 1991. Check out some good news each Wednesday on a newsstand near you. After uh, a half of play, Griggsville Perry has led by as many as six. Pittsfield has led by as many as five. We've had eight lead changes in the game. We've been tied at 17 just about one time. Griggsville Perry with two turnovers. Uh, Pittsfield with six. Uh, fouling situation, uh, Javen Petty with a couple of fouls for Pittsfield. Eli Mendenhall with a single foul. Connor Allen with one. Brendan Tomhave with one. Uh, for GP, two fouls on Wyatt Lipkeman and then single fouls on Lane Lipkeman. Dane McAllister, uh, Garrett Woodward, and Eli White. John's back with the rest of your halftime stats and a little Jess Motors halftime show on Central Illinois Sports after this. 
Camp Point Central Sports are proud to have Dew Wester Grain as a sponsor of this broadcast. Dew Wester Grain, they're for you for all your grain and feed needs. Why don't you give them a call and check out all the locations of Dew Wester Grain. With locations in Golden, Paloma, Mount Sterling, Clayton, La Prairie, Liberty, Industry, Carthage, and Blandonsville. For more information, call Dear Western Grain Services, 696-4461. That's 696-4461 or on the web at DearWesterGrain.com. Welcome to Douglas Automotive and Tire, your expert trek and car repair center in Pittsfield, Illinois. We provide full service from oil changes to new tires and everything in between. Contact us today to schedule service. We're located at 303 West Jefferson Street in Pittsfield, Illinois. Call 217-922-0064. That's 217-922-0064. Britain and the gang know cars, and if you need repairs, call Douglas Automotive today for all your repairs. Damon Plumbing, serving all of Pike County and the surrounding area with quality residential and commercial plumbing services. Damon Plumbing offers septic installation, drain cleaning, new water lines, remodel work for your home, or if you're planning a new build, make sure you include the Damon Boys. To get it right the first time, no job too big. Have you seen Brayden and Doug? Or too small? Sorry, Corby, couldn't resist. Call Brayden at 217-491-5415 or Doug at 217-617-2318. Damon Plumbing, recommended by our family for your family. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies focus on your income. At Northwestern Mutual, we focus on your outcome. That's why we know what it takes to succeed both on your balance sheet and in your life. It takes the right financial partner who looks at where you are now and where you want to go and design a financial plan to take you there so you can achieve the life you're after today and every day after. Focus on your financial outcome with Northwestern Mutual. Contact Sheila Davidsmeyer today. Her office is located at 311 West Washington in Pittsfield, Illinois. Or visit SheilaDavidsmeyer.nm.com, the Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Little Jess Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Quincy, Illinois, 3431 Main Street, here to serve all of your transportation needs. They make the car buying process simple, and they make sure each customer is left with their needs satisfied. Learn more at LittleJessMotor.com or stop by and see them just across from Quincy High School and Quincy, Illinois. After a quarter play, it was 12-10 Pittsfield, uh, now 23-20 Griggsville Perry, so a 13-8 uh, quarter for Griggsville Perry there in that second quarter of play. Uh, for Pittsfield, they shoot the ball 8 of 15 for 53%, 2 of 6 from 3, 33%, 2 of 2 from the free throw line, both of those by Eli Mendenhall for 100% led uh, by 10 points from Mendenhall. Three points from Nolan Daniel, three also from Brendan Tomiev on a couple of made three-pointers. Uh, Adam Musgrave with two, and uh, Connor Allen with two also. Um, I believe that is everyone. That gets to uh, Pittsfield's 20. Griggsville Perry shooting 9 of 16 from the floor, 56%. Uh, one of seven from three, 14%. Four of five from the free throw line for 80%. They're led in scoring by six points from Wyatt Lipkman and Michael Myers. Four points for Lane Lipkman, and then two points for Flint Kirk and uh, Dane McAllister, also a three-pointer made by Garrett Woodward in that first half of play to give them this 23-20 lead. Our halftime stats are brought to you in part by Real Met and Twine, located just north of Pittsfield across from the airport, your local headquarters for concrete lawn ornaments, statues, fountains, benches, and much, much more. Stop by and see Rick and Tracy Real and their gang at Real Met and Twine or call 217-285-5013. It's the Griggsville Perry Tornadoes enjoying a 23-20 lead at halftime over the Pittsfield Sockies. We step aside on the Little Jess Motors halftime show. We get set for second half action next on Central Illinois Sports. At Game Masters in Quincy, we're passionate about the outdoors. Game Masters has the largest selection of gun safes in the tri-state area. That's right, everything from the vaults, vault doors, and safe accessories. Only the quality brands like Fort Knox, American Security, Browning, and Liberty. Come in and check out the displays or go to GameMastersOutdoors.com to check out the selection online as well. Clothing, fishing, hunting, gifts, and more. We're passionate about the outdoors. At Game Masters in Quincy, we're passionate about the outdoors. Shooting is one of our favorite pastimes. When it comes to guns and ammo, think Game Masters. 
They have new guns, used guns, gun safes, and gun accessories. And be sure to head over to GameMastersOutdoors.com to check out our great selection. Clothing, fishing, hunting, gifts, and more at Game Masters in Quincy. We're passionate about the outdoors. Uh Uh-huh, yeah, I'm at Farm and Home for Essentials. Did you find everything you need? No, apparently not. Thank you. No other place has it all, like Farm and Home Supply. Well, Jim, it's going well, but something tells me they're going to have to bring more to the field if they want this game watch party on February 12th to be a winner. That's right, Steve. They need to dig deep from the Liquor Booth playbook to stock up on all the fan favorites for the big game. Bourbon, whiskey, vodka, and tequila must be on the host mind. Good thing the Liquor Booth has a variety of beer on the bench to pull from. They might even call in the wine reserves to make this happen. They're huddled up at the Liquor Booth on Broadway and at 12th and Locust, ready to send in the game changers. Rewards checking, I'm not sure if there's a better checking account around. They have three requirements each month, and if they meet those requirements, we will pay them the highest checking account interest rate that we have right now. At this time, it is a very generous 4.07 APY. As far as ID Secure goes, it gives you protection with credit monitoring, cell phone protection. Prevent identity theft at a reasonable cost. It's watching out for you. And every 90 days you get an update on it, so the peace of mind of that's very nice. Timely application of crop nutrients based on soil test results and the individual yield goals is the focus of the agronomy team at Logan AgriService, Inc. Logan Ag delivers in hydrous ammonia, dry fertilizer, UAN, liquid starter, and our lineup of Logan Agri yield micronutrients direct from us to your field. Striving to get the right fertilizer products at the right place in the right field at the right time, that's Logan AgriService. For fertilizer and application services, call 1-800-LOGAN-AG or visit us online at loganag.com. Logan AgriService, serving agriculture since 1962. Here at Little Jess, we value hard work, dedication, integrity, and leadership. We have a respect for heritage and tradition and believe in the pursuit of building legacies, breaking records, and putting forth award-winning results. That's why supporting schools and local teams is one of our favorite and most exciting parts of our business. For over seven decades, we strive daily to use those same values as a foundation to meet our community's automotive needs and support our future generations. Little Jess Motors, serving our community since 1969. Just about ready to start second half action here on Central Illinois Sports. Our contest tonight is brought to you in part by Moose Lodge 420. Check them out for their Friday meals at the Moose Lodge. It's a new special each week. The food is hot. The drinks are cold at Moose Lodge 420 in Pittsfield. I want to remind you to get your ticket spot for the comedy night at the Moose Lodge. As that is on Saturday, March 4th, the late show is sold out. Still some tickets left for the early show, but they are going like hotcakes right now at the Moose Lodge 420 in uh, Pittsfield. It will be Pittsfield basketball to start the second half. They come out with Petty, Mendenhall, Tom Hay, Musgrave, and Daniel. The Tornadoes counter with Flint Kirk, Dane McAllister, Wyatt and Lane Lipkeman, and Michael Myers. Glad you're alongside with us tonight on Central Illinois Sports. Into the backcourt goes Petty for the basketball, and we are underway here in the third. Petty with it out top, gets it to Daniel at the high post. Over to Tom A, long skip pass, finds Mendenhall. He'll put it on the deck in the lane, has to get it back out, does to Tom A for the three and the tie. Tom A tickles the twine from 19-9. We're tied at 23. Myers into the front court, finds McAllister. Second tie of the game, tied at 17 and now 23. Wyatt Lipkeman, who sat the last, what, about 90 seconds of the first half with two fouls. Not too long for well, GP. They snuck him in there at the end, though. He was over here yeah, in the but, corner. But for the most part, yeah. was sitting. Yeah. Here's Lane Lip coming out top. The McAllister trying to answer. It's off the iron, no good. And Tom Abe secures the board for Pittsfield. Not sure if that's what Garrett White was looking for. I'm going to guess no. Here's Mendenhall. Left side, Daniel fakes the three. Steps inside the arc, lets it fly. It's way too long. And Flint Kirk, another rebound. Then lost his footing, but... 
secures the pass. And into the front court, Michael Myers. He'll attack, has a stolen away by Mendenhall. Mendenhall on the run out into the front court. Bounce pass to Musgrave, and a pretty fine by 44. And Musgrave will put it up and in for two as Pittsfield jumps out to the lead here to start the third. Six minutes, 44 seconds to play in the third. The big man, he can defend, he can shoot it, and he can pass. Back after this on Central Illinois Sports. Rough day at work? We all have them from time to time. But the last thing you want to worry about is coming home to your internet being out. Or even worse, waiting all day to watch the big game only to find out it's blacked out. With CASCOM, those worries are a thing of the past. Our local technicians are here to service any issues and ensure you have a worry-free experience, whether it be internet, TV, or even home phone. Call CASCOM today at 1-800-252-1799 to schedule or upgrade your internet and TV service. with Saki Nation Queen of Hearts tonight. Tracy Smith was drawn again for uh, window 21, revealing the two of hearts. Next week's pot starts at $15,852. Getting closer and closer to that Queen of Hearts, Charlie. In the hearts now, right? Here's the ball now going to go off of Lipcomb in and out of bounds, and the Tornadoes turn it over. Pittsfield on a 5 nothing run to start this third period. He'll have the ball linked to the court to go. Fourth turnover in the game for GP, second in the second half already. Tom Abe in the backcourt. He and Petty back there. Got to get it advanced, and they do to Eli Mendenhall. They work out of a double team to Tom Have. 6.20 to play in the third. 25-23 is the Saki lead on the Trux LLC scoreboard. By the way, you got to get out the Trux and see their new countertop they just uh, – Moved in today. Here's a steal now, Wyatt Lipkman. Lipkman on the takeaway, drives in, shot up no good. Foul though as Mendenhall fouls him. Mendenhall's for, uh, second team first of the second half. It'll be a ball uh, to Wyatt Lipkman shooting a couple. He's three of four from the free throw line. He's got six points. 25 23 to score, 6 08 to go in the third quarter of play. Pittsfield with the two point lead. And Lipkman's first is up and good. He's got seven. He'll get another. Waters Concrete, Tim Waters and crew, they offer quality concrete for your new build, driveways, decorative patios, sidewalks, anything with concrete. Waters Concrete, 309-252-1052. He makes them both. He's got eight, and we're tied at 25. Tied at 17, 23, now 25. Not it up here at Voschel Gymnasium with six minutes to play in the third. Daniel, free throw line, Musgrave. He'll kick it out to Petty on the wing. Out front, Tommy works it around to Daniel. As the Saki's trying to move it against this zone of Griggsville Perry. Daniel with a left wing, trying to get away from what would be a double team. Gets it into Musgrave, finds a little void, and puts it in for two. Musgrave is six now. 27-25, Saki's quickly into the front court come the Tornadoes. Myers shoots, misses, rebound down to Tame. Tame wants to push into the front court for the Saki's. Picks it up, gives it to Petty, right side three. It's no good. Rebound Mendenhall, and he's fouled. It's going to be Michael Myers' second foul team first of the second half, and uh, it'll be ball out of bounds. Spitzfield underneath the basket. Mendenhall playing with good energy again tonight for the Sockies. Here comes Woodward back into the game. He will replace Michael Myers here as he picked up that second foul, so the Tornadoes get just a little bit smaller. But Woodward... Woodward's really sprung up, I think. He's, he's I don't know what they list him at, John. 5'11". Uh, I think he's taller than that. Here's a lob. They tried to get it to Musgrave, and it was too high and thrown away and a turnover on the Sockets. They're eight. 5'14 to play in the third. 27-25 Pittsfield on the Trex scoreboard. The play was there. The shot was open. The pass was not. I tried to get Musgrave to tell Coach Tom Abe on senior night, hey, let's put one of those in where maybe, you know, we can try to see if we can rip this rim off, and that might have been the play. On the right side, Wyatt Lipkeman looking down low for McAllister. Instead, back out around the horn, it comes all the way to Woodward on the left side. Woodward dribble drive, pulls it back out to Wyatt Lipkeman. 4.50 to play in the third, and a 27-25 lead for Pittsfield at the moment. Tornado's on the attack, though. Woodward, who has a three tonight, to Kirk. Back out to Woodward. Hands it to Lane Lipkeman as the Saki student section starts to make some noise, applauding the defensive effort by their squad. Right side with it is Wyatt Lipkeman. Out to McAllister. Around the horn, it comes all the way Flint Kirk. 
Now to McAllister, Petty out on him. McAllister puts it on the deck. Works it on the right side, Wyatt Lipkeman. Knifes inside, a little floater up is short. And the rebound down to Musgrave for Pittsfield. His third. 4.09 to play in the third in a 27-25 contest. Bounce pass, Musgrave tried to go down low. It's off of the foot of Flint Kirk and out of bounds to Pittsfield. Good job, though, by Kirk to prevent the easy bucket underneath. Here's Daniel sitting down as Allen comes back into the game. On the other side, Woodward takes the chair and returning is Michael Myers. Petty to inbound, looking, looking. He'll get it into Mendenhall on the right side. Out of a double team ball tip that ran down by Musgrave to Tom Habe, right side three, in and out, no good. McAllister with the board for GP. Into the front court, finds Wyatt Lipkeman, drives in, and a blocking foul. No, they're going to call out an offensive foul. Oh, my goodness, we'll take a look at that. That's Wyatt Lipkeman's third, team second, also fifth turnover against Grigsville Perry. On the Northwestern Tom, Mutual Instant replay, what do you think? Tom Have drew the charge. It looked like a block on this angle, but I was not the man of the whistle. That's the only one that counts. Into the front court come the Sockies. Musgrave down low, up and in for two. Adam Musgrave with eight. And makes it a 29-25 Pittsfield lead. 3.30 to play in the third. Good ball movement got that basket for Pittsfield. McAllister down to Lane Lipkeman. Back to McAllister. White Lipkeman, by the way, stays on the floor with those three fouls. Here's Lane Lipkeman, baseline drive. Gets caught underneath, throws it out front to Wyatt Lipkeman. Over it goes to Myers. In the corner, Lane Lipkeman, three, no good. Rebound is loose and secured by Connor Allen for His Pittsfield. Second. Petty brings it across for the Sockies. 3-0-3 to play in the third. Musgrave on the wing. Out to Mendenhall. Around the horn, it goes to Tom Hay. Between the circles, Mendenhall puts it on the deck. Now works the pass over to Petty. Petty dribble drive inside, and it's fouled on the floor. Myers or Wyatt Lipkeman. Either way, this is a big call right here. It's going to be Myers' foul, his third, team third. Ball out of bounds underneath the basket to Pittsfield. I thought it could have gone on McAllister two, there, too. Yeah, two guys with three fouls now for the Tornadoes with 2.48 to play in the period. Out top, Musgrave had trouble with the catch. Petty over to Musgrave. He'll throw the bounce pass out between the circles to Mendenhall. Musgrave, short corner, Allen. Turns and faces and into a double team. Ball is knocked loose, but run down by Musgrave. Out front. 2.27 to play in the third. In a 29-25 contest. Petty on the right side. Tommy back to Petty. He'll kick now Musgrave. Left side three, and it's good. And that's what we're talking about with Musgrave. The improvement that he's become as an all-around player has been huge for the Sockies in his senior season. Seven-point lead, the biggest of the night for Pittsfield now. Here's Minden all playing the defense on McAllister. Close to five and a timeout call for Garrett Woodward just in the nick of time. 2-0-1 to play in the third. It's Pittsfield 32, Griggsville 25. Back after this on Central Illinois Sports. When I'm driving in my car with my family, I've got two kids and a wife, and four of us are driving in a car, we literally get excited when we see a dot truck. It's actually a sense of pride. Why I would encourage anyone to work a dot. We take care of each other. The company continues to grow and expand. That to me is what brings me to work every day and that, that I enjoy. Diversity, culture, family, all of those things. If you want them, you should be a dot. We do a procedure called a transcatheter aortic valve replacement and we call it TAVR. TAVR is state of the art. It uh, wasn't really available worldwide until the early 2000s. It's a minimally invasive procedure in order to replace the valve. I'm number one. I was number 100. Years ago, they would have to do open heart surgery, and now they don't. Had I not had it done, I would not be here today. I feel like I'm living on a bonus of blessings. Two minutes, one second to play in the third. 32-25 is the Pittsfield lead. GP took the timeout as Dean McAllister was dangerously close to a five-second call, and Garrett White knew it. Called the timeout to save the turnover. Like he might have been at five and a half. Eli White has checked in during the dead ball. Here's a three now, top of the key. Wyatt Lip come in from way downtown. He's got a love. And just what the doctor ordered for the Tornadoes brings them back to within four. 
143 to play in the third. Here's Musgrave. Has the ball stripped and stolen away by Myers. Here nice. comes Wyatt Lipkin on the run out into nice the front turnover. court. Leaves it out front to Myers. Left side three. Bang! It goes again. Back-to-back -back threes by GP. And they've made a seven-point lead disappear into just one in a blink of an eye. Myers uh, with nine now. Musgrave on the wing left side. 115 to play in the third. 32-31 Pittsfield. On the baseline with it is Anstead. Back to Musgrave. Can work the pass over to Allen. Daniel right side. Tom Ave on the short corner to Anstead on the right side now. Up top, Daniel. Dribble drive. Kick to Musgrave. Under a minute to play in the third in a one-point contest. Trucks LLC, our scoreboard sponsor, 217-922-0044 for all your diesel repair needs. Here's Daniel left side, fakes the three, has picked up the bounce. Gets it to Musgrave, who's got nine in the quarter. Off to Allen. They'll put it on the deck now to Daniel. 35 seconds to play in the third. Pittsfield out a seven-point lead literally just moments ago. Back-to-back -back threes by GP out of the timeout. Has made it a one-point game again. It's been close throughout the night tonight. Never farther apart than seven points. The Tornadoes have led by as many as four in this contest. Call it six, John says. 15 seconds to play in the third as Pittsfield holds for a last-second opportunity to beat a buzzer here. GP will get the ball to start the fourth quarter. Tom Have off of the dribble. Works it to Daniel. Fakes the three. Now fires an off-balance three. No good. Rebound loose as the buzzer sounds. And we head to the fourth quarter. In a one-point contest, it's Pittsfield 32, Griggsville Perry 31. Fourth quarter play-by-play -play your way next on Central Illinois Sports. When you're ready to make your dream kitchen and bathroom a reality, find inspiration at Pike County Lumber in Pittsfield. It starts with a 3D design so you can see every angle and every custom detail. Traditional style or the newest trends will create a design to fit your lifestyle. Your custom kitchen and bathroom will have the features that you need. A large versatile island for work or entertaining. Quartz countertops. Quality onyx that offers dozens of colors. From start to finish, trust the knowledge and experience at Pike County Lumber. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You've heard that phrase many times in Rod Prentice in Pittsfield. Your State Farm agent is the guy you can count on to be your friend and neighbor in the insurance business. He has a complete line of insurance available for you from State Farm Insurance. You can reach him at 217-285-6930. Our family trusts Rod Prentice with all of our insurance needs. Stop by their office on Washington Street and see the girls in Rod Prentice, your State Farm agent, 217-285-6930. Well, we're headed to the fourth corner. It's a 32-31 lead for the Pittsfield Sockies on top of Griggsville Perry. And, and uh, it'll be Tornado basketball to start the final quarter. After three quarters, Pittsfield shooting 13 of 24 from the four, 54%, 4 of 11 from three. GP 11 of 22, 50%, 3 of 11 from three. Tornadoes with a chance to take a lead here after trailing by seven. They did this in the first half when they got down. Here's a shot put up no good by Lane Lipkeman, but he's fouled and will head to the free throw line to shoot a pair, trying to give GP the lead once again. That'll be Mendenhall's third, team second of the second half. And uh, Lane Lipkin to the free throw line for the first time tonight. He's got four points. 32-31 the score. Pittsfield with a one-point lead. 7.51 to go in the game. And Lipkin looking to change that. He makes his first. I'll get another. Saturday, March 18th will be the annual Ty Rylander Memorial Run. The Remembering Ty Rylander Facebook page has all the details for sign-up. Make sure to check it out and attend the event on Saturday, March 18th. He makes them both and gives GP the one-point lead. That is the 10th lead change of the game. And a 9-0 run by the Tornadoes to take the advantage. 33-32 on the track scoreboard. 7.47 to play. Tom Abe to Pet in the backcourt. Works it across the half-court line against Lane Lipkeman. Over to Mendenhall. Out between the circles, Petty. Tom Abe. Daniel and Musgrave round out the five for Pittsfield. GP has the brothers Lipkeman, White, McAllister and Myers. Musgrave, who was the hot hand in the third quarter for the Sockies, gets it to Daniel, now Petty. Over to Tom Ape. Left side, Daniel. Tom Ape around the horn, it goes to Musgrave. On the right side, Petty. Sockies looking kind of like they did in the second quarter with uh, not a lot of opportunities inside the perimeter at the moment. Now Tom Abe left side for a three. It's off the mark, and Eli White pulls down the board. His first. 
Gets it to Wyatt Lipkman. He'll trot it across. On the right side, Myers. Now Lane Lipkman on the dribble against Petty. Leaves it to McAllister. Myers right side three, no good. And the rebound secured by Eli Mendenhall. His third. Petty with the basketball into the front court for the Sockies. Over to Tame. Tornadoes have owned the even quarters. Pittsfield's been in favor in the odds. But the uh, issue with that, if you're a Pittsfield, you're about to lose a game if that holds true. And GP's like, all right, I'll take it. Why not? 6.20 left. <laughs> on the right side, Daniel. Petty. Puts it on the deck. Bounce pass right side, Daniel on the perimeter. Musgrave. Petty. Trying to get some spacing now are the Sockies. GP doing a good job covering that boy. Now they'll get it inside to Musgrave. Over to Daniel for a three. It's off the mark. And the rebound down to Wyatt Lip. He'll, push, he'll push into the front court now. 5.52 to play. Here's a three on the way. Myers no good. And back-to-back, -back, uh, well, not very good shots on either end, let's say. Here's Daniel. Tame into Musgrave. Rips, drives, shot up no good. Fouled. And he will shoot two shots. I believe it'll be Lane Lipkman, and it will. That'll be Lane second, team fourth. Musgrave to the free throw line, shooting a couple. His first two free throws of the evening, 32-30, excuse me, 33-32, GP with the one-point lead, 540 to go in the game. Musgrave's first is up and good. He's got a uh, 12 now. Hey, check out Bowler's Universe. They've got great meal specials each day. They are open until 10 o'clock, Monday through Thursday, midnight on Friday, Saturday's 4 to midnight at Bowler's Universe in Pittsfield. Musgrave makes them both, gives Pittsfield the one-point lead and the 11th lead change of the game. Here's a drive in, Michael Myers off the lane, Lipkeman three, good from downtown lane. Lipkeman puts the Tornadoes right back on top. 36-34 GP, 5.23 left. Mendenhall into the front corner, works it out to Petty. Daniel on the right wing, free throw line, Eli Mendenhall. Got to get out of the lane. This on the pass to Tom Ave. Petty gets it between the circles. Right side, Daniel. Thought about the skip instead to Petty. Reverses over to Tame. 5.03 left in a two-point contest. GP has the advantage. Pittsfield has the basketball. Tame three is good. And he'll put the Sockies back on top by one and answer the three. 37-36 Pittsfield. 4.50 to play on the track scoreboard. Tom Hayes third three. He's got nine points in the game. Lane Lipkeman. Myers. Dribble drive. Kicks out top. Lane Lipkeman. Right side, Myers. Now Wyatt Lipkeman. 4.37 to play in the ballgame. And a one-point contest now in favor of Pittsfield. Screen for Wyatt Lipkeman. Drives, kicks. Myers, three for the lead. Is an air ball. And a rebound down to Tame. He'll take it into the front court now for the Sockies. Picks it up near the center circle. Into Mendenhall. Kicks left side. Musgrave three. It's way long. And Eli White grabs his second board of the game. Here come the Tornadoes on the attack. Wyatt Lipkeman trying to make something happen to Myers. He'll just say, let's attack down low. Runner up good. Michael Myers with another two. He's got 11. 14th lead change now, 38-37 GP. Four minutes left of this one. Petty in the back corner, works it across to Mendenhall. Bounce pass to Petty. He'll attack the middle. Bounce pass into Musgrave up and in for another two. Musgrave with 15, 15th lead change. Back and forth we are here in the fourth, 340 to play. Here's Lipkeman, drives on the baseline, gets by Daniel, shot up no good. Rebound pulled down by Nolan Daniel. Daniel. Into the front court, works it in to Mendenhall, who puts it up and in for another two. He's got 12 first two of the second half for Mendenhall. And makes it a 41-38 contest. The GP bench wanted a foul on that last play, and uh, they thought Daniel had bumped the man on the drive. 3.13 to play, 41-38 Sockies. On the Trex LLC scoreboard. Myers out front. Works it to Wyatt Lipkeman. Trying to break the man off the dribble. Drives and is fouled by Musgrave on the floor. Musgrave's first team third. It'll be ball out of bounds underneath the basket to Grigsville Perry. Here's Allen back into the game. Mendenhall sits down for a quick breather. 3.02 left, 41-38. Tornadoes trail by three. Out of bounds underneath on their own baseline. Kind of looked like Musgrave went, well, you're not going to drive by me if I have to grab you and hold you. That's what we're going to do. Just his first foul, you tell yeah. us. And here's an illegal screen. Now Eli White will be called 
for the illegal pick, it looks like here. No, they're going to call this one on Allen. Wow. Okay, well, that's going to be Allen's second, team fourth, and it was definitely an illegal screen. Oh, boy. I don't think it was anything, actually. You watch it on the Northwestern Mutual replay. This looked like a pick. That's legal in basketball, illegal in football. Here's Myers left side. Gets to the rim again. Over the front of the rim, no good. Gets his own board. Puts it back up. Blocked by Allen. And a rebound down to the sockets. The end of the front court, Musgrave. Through a pass, stolen away. Allen goes down hard. The end of the front court, Lipkin on the runner up and in for two. Wyatt Lipkin with another basket. He's got 13. Pulls it down to a one-point game. 41-42, 33 to play. Allen into the front court near the sideline. Allen's a little hobbled out there for Pittsfield right now. He took a spill the last time around. Petty now gets it out top. 219 left. 41-40 is the Pittsfield advantage. They've got the basketball on their end of the court. Daniel. Petty over to Tom A. Pittsfield trying to win their fifth in a row. Tornado's trying to win their 21st game on the season. And it's been uh, as billed here tonight. Tom A into Allen. Around the horn it comes to Daniel Allen with 153 to play. Both teams are just four fouls, John, and that could come into play here down the stretch. Somebody built a three or four point lead, it definitely could. Well, if you're GP here even, you might think about just gaining a couple and outside they're just going to get a steal on a bad pass. 11th turnover on Pittsfield. Here come the Tornadoes with a chance to retake the lead with 1.30 to play. Myers with the basketball. Out top, Lane Lipkeman takes a glance up at the clock. Kicks it right side, Wyatt Lipkeman. McAllister with it. And Pittsfield in the same situation here. You'd think you'd want to get up and be really aggressive yeah. if you pick up a foul, so what? Might as well be. Out top, Myers drives inside, kicks to McAllister. Wyatt Lipkeman gets it on the wing. Surveys the floor to Lane Lipkeman, 107 left, 41-40. GP trails by one, but they have the basketball in the hands of Lane Lipkeman with a minute left in regulation. Wyatt Lipkeman with the basketball. 50 seconds to play. Go ahead. Here's a drive. Wyatt Lipkeman blocked. No, they're going to call it an offensive foul. An offensive foul is going to be called here on Wyatt Lipkeman. That's Wyatt Lipkeman's fourth, team sixth, and it'll be a ball out of bounds to Pittsfield, length of the court to go. Let's see if we can see it on the Northwestern Mutual replay. Yeah, Daniel stepped in and he took it. You could have an argument, I'd say, if you're GP, that maybe Wyatt Lipkeman got bumped from the side, but it was a bang-bang play right there, and a big-time play by Nolan Daniel after having that turnover just moments before. And then he sits down as Mendenhall back in the game. Petty in the backcourt, he and Tommy, 43 seconds left. Bad pass is going to be nearly stolen away. Mendenhall secures it, though. Ball tipped out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Sockies. If you're Brad Tommy, do you maybe want a timeout here? I think he will, and he does. He does. 37.4 seconds left. 41-40, Pittsfield leads. They'll have the basketball when we come back. Farmers, are you looking for high-yield genetics to help the bottom line on your farm? Contact Lipkeman Seed Sales for high-yielding A-Series soybeans from Pioneer. We have the luxury right now to be offering the highest-yielding soybean lineup Pioneer has offered in 30 years. Couple that with a service that is second to none, and you have a winning combination for your farm. For corn, check out the results of the National Corn Growers Yield Contact and see who's at the top. Maybe today is a good day to revisit Pioneer corn hybrids as well. Contact Aaron, Evan, and Brett today for high-yielding A-Series soybeans from Pioneer. Go Eagles! Did you know that PCRE Real Estate PCRE Real Estate and Auction is your number one resource for buying or selling real estate in West Central Illinois? With two office locations, one in Pike County and the other in Calhoun County, PCRE Real Estate and Auction is the place to go when you're looking to buy or sell farmland, recreational and hunting land, residential or commercial property. See our current listings at PCRERealEstate.com or call us at 217-285-5800 for PCRE Real Estate and Auction. 37.4 seconds left. Pittsfield called the timeout. They have three timeouts left. Tornado's down to two. If the possession arrow favors Pittsfield, should there be a tie-up? Sockies have the ball out of bounds underneath their own hoop. Up by one. 41-40 on the Trucks LLC scoreboard. Petty to throw it in. Looks for the opening. Looks for the opening. Throw the ball. He will get a five-second call. No, a timeout first by Brad Tomey. 
Had a couple of opportunities to throw it in, did not do so, and a timeout taken by Pittsfield here gives us an opportunity to remind you about our friends at Real Net and Twine. Rick and Trace are real on their staff. Man, they have just lots of great offerings for you when it comes to concrete lawn ornaments, statues, fountains, benches, and much, much more. It's all made right here locally by the hardworking staff at Real Net and Twine, 217-285-5013. Now both teams are down to two timeouts remaining. Two fulls on uh, each team as Pittsfield took that 30-second timeout. Riggsville Perry has five team fouls. Pittsfield has four, and again, that could come into play here. Let's say Griggsville Perry gets a steal on a basket. Pittsfield would have to foul in a, in a hurry as they only have 14 fouls. I would expect the Tornadoes to be very aggressive on the defensive side here. And again, one of those times, if you pick up a foul, so what, right? Exactly. Petty to inbound once again for the Sockies. Looks for an opening, gets it in. Ball tips, someone away. McAllister. Gets it to Lipkeman into the front court. Wyatt Lipkeman dribble drive, fouled on the floor. They'll say no, it's on, the, on the floor. floor. He called it on the floor from the beginning. Foul on the floor is the official's call. Mendenhall's fourth, team fifth. And you can see Mendenhall bumps him with a hip check there. Ball out of bounds underneath the basket to Griggs Perry. 31.6 seconds left, Mendenhall's fourth. Sitting down is Petty now as Daniel is back in for the Sockies. GP will have the ball underneath, down by a point. Michael Myers to inbound here. If you're Pittsfield and not Mendenhall, you can be very aggressive. Just don't fall on a shot. Myers looks to get it in. He's close to five, and a timeout whistled for Griggsville Perry. Both of these teams are locked in on the defensive side right now. 31.6 seconds left. It's Pittsfield 41, Griggsville Perry 40. Back after this. This is Charlie Hull, and I'm asking for your vote for the Pikeland School Board. As a lifelong resident of Pike County, I know of the many great things the Pikeland School District has been able to accomplish and the great success of so many of our students. I want to help make our district a place where kids are excited to learn, teachers are excited to teach, and a place our great community members feel welcomed and proud to be a part of. I would appreciate your vote for Pikeland School Board on April 4th. I'm not sure if there's a better checking account around. We will pay the highest checking account interest rate that we have right now. It is a very generous 4.07 APY. As far as ID Secure goes, it gives you protection with credit monitoring. So the peace of mind of that's very nice. 31.6 seconds left. Tornadoes called the timeout as they were close to a five-second call. They're down to one timeout remaining. 41-40 is the Pittsfield lead on the Trex LLC scoreboard. It'll be GP ball out of bounds on the baseline. It's been a dandy contest here tonight at Bosho Gymnasium, and this big crowd has stuck around here for what is uh, shaping up to be a fantastic finish. Myers will be the man to inbound for Griggsville Perry. Guarded on the inbounds play by Connor Allen. I don't know the Greeks Perry is looking for a quick hitter here. I think they'd probably yeah, like to get the ball and pull it out, which is what they're going to do here. 27 seconds left. If you're Pittsfield, do you come up and get a couple of quick fouls just Might in as case? Well. Here's Wyatt Lipkeman. Drives, spins. Daniel with the block and the board here for Tom Have. He'll then throw it away, though, as Michael Myers gets the steal. 15 seconds left. Ball is stolen, but a foul call. On the floor. A foul called on the floor to be the sixth foul on Pittsfield. They got the stop and then threw it right into the hands of Michael Myers. The Ball out of bounds again for Griggs Perry. Foul on Musgrave, his second, team sixth. 13.3 seconds left. Myers to throw it in for the Tornadoes. And Brad Tomhave now wants the timeout. So the Sockies will be done to one timeout. It's just a 30-second break. It gives us an opportunity to remind you to get signed up for the annual Ty Rylander Memorial Run. It's scheduled for Saturday, March 18th. The Remembering Ty Rylander Facebook page has all the details. Proceeds from the Memorial have benefited Little League, the Pikeland PE program, Lowry Park exercise equipment, standing desk for Pikeland, a walking path at King Park, FFA programs at Griggsville, Pittsfield, and Pleasant Hill. Elementary libraries at Pikeland and Pleasant Hill and rural teaching scholarships for WIU. Get signed up for the Saturday, March 18th annual Ty Rylander Memorial Run. It'll be bought out of bounds again to the Tornadoes under the basket with now just 13.3 seconds left in the contest. Again, Michael Myers will be the man to throw it in for GP. 
The inbounds man is guarded by Connor Allen. Inbounds comes in to Lipkeman. Out to Lane Lipkeman with 10 seconds left in this one. Wyatt Lipkeman with the basketball off of the screen, looking for a driving lane. Kicks to Myers for the three. It's no good. Rebound loose. Secured by Tom Hayes. Buzzer sounds. Pittsfield wins. 41-40. Myers got a look at the three, but was unable to get it to go. And Pittsfield wins this one, their fifth in a row. They move to 11 and 13. The Tornadoes drop to 20 and 8 on the season. And we take you to the Illini Community Hospital post-game show. We have a lot to talk about on the post-game show. Final stats, a visit with Pittsfield coach Brad Tomave and with Amar Player of the Game, presented by Edward Jones Financial Advisor Derek Harris. It all comes your way next on Central Illinois Sports. Illini Community Hospital is committed to providing high-quality specialty care close to home. We are pleased to welcome Dr. William Severino, urologist, and Dr. Mark Mount, ear, nose, and throat physician, to the Consulting Physician Clinic team at the Castile Center. Specialty care is also provided for orthopedics, cardiology, podiatry, obstetrics, oncology, and more. Learn more by visiting IlliniHospital.org or call 217-285-2113, extension 3950 to schedule an appointment. Camp Point Central Sports are proud to have New Wester Grain as a sponsor of this broadcast. New Wester Grain, they're for you for all your grain and feed needs. Why don't you give them a call and check out all the locations of New Wester Grain. With locations in Golden, Paloma, Mount Sterling, Clayton, La Prairie, Liberty, Industry, Carthage, and Blandonsville. For more information, call Deer Wester Grain Services, 696-4461. That's 696-4461 or on the web at DeerWesterGrain.com. Welcome to Douglas Automotive and Tire, your expert truck and car repair center in Pittsfield, Illinois. We provide full service from oil changes to new tires and everything in between. Contact us today to schedule service. We're located at 303 West Jefferson Street in Pittsfield, Illinois. Call 217-922-0064. That's 217-922-0064. Britain and the gang know cars, and if you need repairs, call Douglas Automotive today for all your repairs. Damon Plumbing, serving all of Pike County and the surrounding area with quality residential and commercial plumbing services. Damon Plumbing offers septic installation, drain cleaning, new water lines, remodel work for your home, or if you're planning a new build, make sure you include the Damon Boys. To get it right the first time, no job too big. Have you seen Braden and Doug? Or too small? Sorry, Corby, couldn't resist. Call Braden at 217-491-5415 or Doug at 217-617-2318. Damon Plumbing, recommended by our family for your family. Few things compare to Camp Point Central's fans' dedication to the Panthers. The same can be said about Channel and the farmers they serve. You see, unlike other seed companies, they don't have salesmen. With Channel, you get the advantage of a dedicated Channel seedsman, a trusted year-round advisor who can provide the right recommendations for your fields. It's their hands-on approach that truly sets them apart. Customized service, expert advice, elite seed management products. Find your Channel seedsman at Channel.com or contact local district sales manager Matt Hughes at 217-242-8852. Welcome back on the Illini Community Hospital postgame. Joe Finham on this one, a 41-40 win for Pittsfield as they defeat Grigsville Perry. The Sockies move to 11-13. They've won five in a row. Grigsville Perry is 20-8 on the season now. In what was an absolutely dandy contest here at Boschel Gymnasium. The game never got farther away than seven points on either side. Pittsfield's biggest lead was a seven-point advantage. GP led by as many as six. But for most of the night, John, it was just a one-possession contest, including right at the end when Michael Myers got a pretty good look at a three, just couldn't get it to go. Pittsfield secured the rebound and the victory, 41-40 over the Tornadoes. After a quarter, it was Pittsfield 12-10. Uh, after two quarters, it was 23-20 GP. Uh, after the third quarter, 32-31 Pittsfield. And uh, at the end of the game, 41-40, Pittsfield wins uh, by the one-point lead there. In the game, Grigsville Perry shot uh, 14 of 33 from the floor, 42%, 4 of 16 from 3, 25%, 8 of 9 from the free throw line for 88%. Led the scoring by 13 points from Wyatt Lipman, 9 points for Lane Lipman, 11 points for Michael Myers, uh, and 3 points for Garrett Woodward, 2 
for Dane McAllister, two for Flint Kirk in the game. Uh, for the Pittsfield Sackies, they finished the game shooting 16 of 30 from the floor, 53%. 5 of 15 from 3, 33%. 4 of 4 from the free throw line for 100%. Led in scoring by 15 points from Adam Musgrave. 13 of those in the second half. 12 points for Eli Mendenhall. 9 points for Brendan Tomhave on three made threes. Uh, 3 points for Nolan Daniel. And uh, 2 points for Connor Allen in the game to get to their 41. Sockies win their fifth in a row. They're 10 and 13, on, or excuse me, 11 and 13 on the season. We'll talk with Saki head coach Brand Tom Ave next on the Illini Community Hospital Post Game Show. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies focus on your income. At Northwestern Mutual, we focus on your outcome. That's why we know what it takes to succeed both on your balance sheet and in your life. It takes the right financial partner who looks at where you are now and where you want to go and design a financial plan to take you there so you can achieve the life you're after today and every day after. Focus on your financial outcome with Northwestern Mutual. Contact Sheila Davidsmeyer today. Her office is located at 311 West Washington in Pittsfield, Illinois. Or visit SheilaDavidsmeyer.nm.com. The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Well, Jim, it's going well, but something tells me they're going to have to bring more to the field if they want this game watch party on February 12th to be a winner. That's right, Steve. They need to dig deep from the liquor booth playbook to stock up on all the fan favorites for the big game. Bourbon, whiskey, vodka, and tequila must be on the host mind. Good thing the liquor booth has a variety of beer on the bench to pull from. They might even call in the wine reserves to make this happen. They're huddled up at the liquor booth on Broadway and at 12th and Locust, ready to send in the game changers. Uh-huh, yeah, I'm at Farm and Home for Essentials. Did you find everything you need? No, apparently not, thank you. No other place has it all, like Farm and Home Supply. Welcome back on the Illini Community Hospital postgame show. A 41-40 final on this one as Pittsfield defeats Griggsville Perry. And we're visiting with Saki head coach Brad Tom, even coach. Uh, first of all, this game was supposed to be played all the way back in December. Your team at that time was uh, a little discombobulated in about every way, shape, and form you could have. A lot of kids out illness with some injuries and uh Man, I think if you'd have played at that point, it might have been a little different contest. Yeah, quite possibly. Uh, so kudos to Garrett uh, uh, being willing to, to move it. And, and when we had so much sickness going through the program, we were we were down four or five of our top seven at that point. So, uh, so you know, I appreciate Garrett, his willingness to, to, to postpone it. And, and uh, I, think, I think he had some of that happen, and maybe in their junior high and teams were willing to do so. So uh, – you're thankful for that. Uh, um, so yeah, so uh, what an atmosphere! What an atmosphere! That was a, a good varsity basketball game um, on both sides uh, for 32 minutes. You know, couldn't get uh, neither team could get shake free too much. Uh, when 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 uh, we'd pop them in the mouth, they come right back, pop us, and took the lead. And it was just uh, guys competing against each other and battling and 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 making plays, so uh, happy for the guys. But what a uh, good good, good, ba good high school basketball game. Game had 15 lead changes, five ties. You led by as many as seven. Griggs will appear by as much as six. Most of the time it was just a one or two possession game throughout the night, and that means you have to be locked in at every single time the ball's coming your way on the defensive side especially. Yeah, for sure. We got caught uh, in the first half. We kind of got talk had talked to – yeah, I think it was Connor. Uh, but these, these guys, don't uh, you know, they don't settle. You get a, you get a missed shot. And they're on the attack, and that's how they want to play. They want to get up and down. And and um, uh, Connor was kind of late on a recognition of where one of the Lipkermans was coming up on his his left side and didn't get to some gap help. But but uh, uh, credit Griggsville, they they you know make or miss shot. They want to attack the attack the basket on the other end. So yes, every possession was uh, was key defensively, and we couldn't get to our uh, we tried to get to some of our press in the full court, but their guards are just too good. Uh, for us to try to match up with and scramble back to match up. So went back to just straight white, straight man-to-man, -man and, and said, let's dig the toes in and let's go. So uh, the guys did it. 
Uh, I think for the fifth straight game, you shoot better than 50% from the floor, uh, 5 of 15 from 3, 4 of 4 from the free throw line, so made those count. Uh, you had three guys, you know, two guys in uh, double figures, and Brandon right behind us to nine points. I don't know what happened, Coach. I watched you play in that Jerseyville game, and you guys didn't look like much like a basketball team, and all of a sudden these last five games, the kids have really found something. Yeah, they have. I, you know, I don't know what light clicked on, but I'm glad there's electricity to it. So uh, um, they're shooting it better. They're playing with a lot more confidence, and I think they're playing with confidence on that offensive end, which is creating some confidence defensively to be able to fly around. And, boy, I thought Nolan Daniel had a heck of a game defensively, uh, really sliding and taking away driving angles from those two twins. And, uh, did a nice job, real nice job, uh, um, and the kids kind of fed off that. So, um, and you, you know, you need every possession, every game, you need somebody to step up, and you never know when it's going to be your turn to, to, to be that guy, and maybe not score a lot of points, but be that presence when we need it on the defensive end. So, um, yeah, sure happy after that Jerseyville game that Saturday, boy. Um, one boy got one old boy spent a lot of time in his garage with some uh, simulator golf therapy for sure. So that weekend, um, maybe that was it. You know, I, I don't talk about. No one made a really really nice defensive stop uh, on what looked like it was going to be the last stop of the game. You guys then turned it over. Talk about kind of the mindset at that point where it feels like, man, you you got that stop, you can kind of exhale, and all of a sudden, boom, you're got to be right back at it again. First thing I told, and it was Brennan who tried to make a play and throw one deep for a layup, which you, you like the aggressiveness, not with 13 seconds left for sure, or however many there were. So, but the thing was, they come to the, the bench, they kind of had a look, flush it. I think that's kind of been our message since Jan, since Jerseyville. It's flush it. I'm going to make the next shot. I'm going to make the next defensive play. But you got to flush that because there's no sense, no sense sitting there and looking what's in the toilet. you got to flush it. Let's move on. So I think they broke that huddle, and they were just, hey, we got to go make a play. Can't do anything about that. You get a night in the gym for practice tomorrow, and then you're at Barry on Friday. And this is a Western Wildcat team. You know Curtis South's teams are notorious for getting better as the season goes along. And you saw them the first week of the season, and they're no pushover. No, and they pushed us here. The, uh, that Friday of the Thanksgiving tournament. They, they came out and flew around. So, so I expect nothing else other than that. Um, so, uh, yeah, we got to be ready to play. It's one, you know, we got to get the next practice. We got to come with a focus to improve the next practice, work on some things, sharpen some things, uh, talk about some things, but then be ready to get on the bus and, and see if we can't finish a tough week. Uh, so, uh, you know, they got a goal in mind, and they're playing with some some enthusiasm. They're playing together, and, and – um, it's a, you know it's, it's I've always said it's a fun group to be around but but boy they uh, they I tell you I got one guy on my staff I got to work I got to work on um, things with my staff sometimes more than I do my players so uh, I won't mention any names uh, Scott Bacon but uh, we'll talk about it later. One last thing we might need some new uniforms. <laughs> he might have sprayed somebody with a, a colored uh, a colored liquid instead of water. Oh boy, it doesn't well, go uh, with white. Donations will be accepted at uh, the high school office. But, uh, hey, one last thing, Coach. <laughs> Boschel Gym and a uh, full house like you had tonight with fans into it the entire game, there's no better place to be. No, uh, what an atmosphere. And we knew it was going to be a good one, even it just being a, a varsity game. Uh, we try to still create it. And Minden, we want to thank the folks from Minden who switched that freshman game uh, to here so we could make it feel like a, you know, a regular varsity basketball game night with a prelim game and a, and a, uh, a varsity game and boy they were here early it was packed for the JV game and and uh, you know Mr. Weir over there's got it going with the with the uh, I don't know if we need to start calling DJ Scribble or what but he's got it uh, he's got it electric in here but the kids that play the game create the excitement for the fans that fill the seats and and both communities do a great job of supporting their youngsters and we're, we're appreciative we are appreciative for our players to be, be able to compete in this type of atmosphere. DJ Clint Weir is available for birthdays, weddings, bar mitzvahs, <laughs> and anniversaries, so make sure to get him booked. Coach, as always, we appreciate the time. Thanks, guys. That's hockey head coach Brad Tommy here on the Illini Community Hospital postgame show. Time to name our player of the game. It's presented by Edward Jones Financial Advisor Derek Harris. Financial investments are important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes received from their coaches, teachers, parents, and mentors. Derek Harris, your Edward Jones financial advisor, understands this, and that's why Derek Harris is a proud sponsor of the player of the game on Central Illinois Sports. And I think, John, tonight, it's a night to give it to Adam Musgrave. 
15 points, 13 of those in the second half of play. And he helps lead the Sockies to their fifth consecutive victory as they defeat the uh, Grigsville Perry Tornadoes 41 to 40. We're back in action with you on Friday night from Barry, Western, and Pittsfield. Brian will have Camp Point Central and McComb. We hope you'll join us then for another Central Illinois Sports 